Hi, I'm Professor Lynn Ritchie. In this video, we're going to be looking at the diversity and status and roles, and we're specifically going to take a look at societal hierarchies. Societal hierarchies emerge when societies rank statuses, and we can explore three factors to help us better understand societal hierarchies. First of all, prestige. Prestige is the degree of respect that a society attributes to the status or the value a society attributes to the statuses. Privileges, this is how a society distributes valuable resources among the statuses. And power, power is, is considered a special privilege. And this is the ability to influence the behavior of others against their will. Since all societies have similar statuses, there is a high degree of consistency across cultures and time in the ranking of statuses in terms of prestige. We can look at some of the work from Professor Donald Trayman. He developed the International Standard Occupational Prestige Scale in 1977. Higher prestige scores are found for occupations requiring a high degree of skill, talent, or education. We find higher prestige scores for occupations requiring a high degree of authority that includes leadership and management. Higher prestige scores for occupations that require a high degree of economic control. We can also observe that we rank ascribed status categories based on prestige. And just a few examples here. Biological sex. Male gener males generally have a higher prestige and females have lower prestige or value. Skin tone. Lighter tones have higher prestige, higher value than darker tones. Religion. I always like to think our religion has higher prestige and we rank other religions as having lower prestige. When we think about these rankings of statuses or the prestige of the statuses, we also have to recognize that higher prestige statuses will come along with more privileges. And by that, we mean the advantages for people who occupy the statuses. What are the benefits of occupying a particular status? Black and Stone identified five key components of privilege. Privilege is a special advantage or advantages that is not universal or common. A privilege is not earned through individual effort or talent. There is a sense of entitlement. It is expected by the people who occupy a particular status. The privilege usually comes at the expense of others. In other words, we're withholding benefits from others. This might be quality education, quality health care. And finally, the people who have the privilege are usually not aware of the privileges that they have. Black and Stone noted that research has found difference in the distribution of privileges based on sex and sexual orientation, race and ethnicity, social economic status, class and caste, age, disability, and religious affiliation. Every status can be assessed by the privileges granted to it by society. So we can ask ourselves, what privileges should be universal? What should actually be not maybe privileges, but human rights? I really like the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights that was written in 1948. I encourage you to take a look at it. And it might be a good place where we can begin to 
look at how we distribute privileges within our society. The United Nations also track human rights violations, and I encourage you to take a look at their human rights violation reports. The last factor that we can consider when we look at these rankings of statuses and privileges is to recognize that power is a special privilege. And this is our ability to influence the behavior of others against their will. We can see that parents have more power than children. Parents control information, clothing, bedtime, chores, punishment, sanctions, leisure time activities. But we also have to recognize that children have a degree of power over parental behaviors. How do children influence the behaviors of their parents against their will? We can also see that teachers have more power than students, but students also have some power. We can revisit Hofstede's national cultural dimensions of power distance. This is the degree to which people accept and expect power to be distributed unequally. High power distance societies accept hierarchical order. The subordinate superior relationship is polarized. There is no defense against power abuse by superiors. There's a formal authority. There are formal sanctions. There's limited as aspirations to each rank. There are rigid definitions of roles. The power is centralized and status symbols are important. And there are privileges for those in the higher ranks that are accepted and expected. Lower power distance countries strive to equalize the distribution of power. Independence and autonomy will be valued in low power distance societies. Hierarchies are seen for convenience only. There is an expectation of equal rights. Superiors should be accessible. There's an expectation of a coaching leader. Power is decentralized. Employees expect to be consulted. Control is disliked. Informal interactions between statuses. We have communication that is more direct and participative, and it's more consensus oriented. Every situation that we might find ourselves in, we must be able to identify the statuses that are involved within the interaction in that environment. Sometimes if we fail to recognize the most important status, and these could be ascribed statuses and not our achieved statuses, we can have cultural misunderstandings. When we visit other countries, we also need to be aware of our own emotional response to the status hierarchies. If we come from a low power distance society, it might be hard for us to accept the inequalities that we see within a particular society. Or we might want to uh, make other people feel equal to us whereas they might uh, be insulted by that if they feel like we are intruding around their responsibilities to their community and their group. So it's very important for us to be aware that how we view this power distance and is uh, very important in our interactions with other people especially as we look at societies that have more high power distance versus low power distance. Next, we're going to start exploring the interaction process. And the first thing we're going to look at is how do we see the world? And we're going to take a look at our perspectives and how our perspectives are shaped. Okay, we'll see you soon.